Everywhere you look on the internet, you're gonna have someone telling you that fasting is terrible for women. They're gonna tell you that your thyroid is going to be destroyed, they're gonna tell you that your hormones are gonna be completely out of whack, and that you're never going to recover. Well, it's not quite the truth. In this video, I wanna give you the A to Z breakdown of what happens to the female body during a fast, during intermittent fasting in particular. How often should a woman fast? What can they expect? What's happening with their hormones and what's happening with their reproductive system? So in this video, I'm gonna take you through A to Z, what goes on, starting with the starvation and the hunger hormones, leading into your reproductive hormones, then leading into your thyroid. So let's dive right in, and men, this video is for you too, because it's gonna help describe exactly what's going on in your body as well. Okay, here's the thing. When it comes down to starvation hormones, we're talking about leptin, ghrelin, insulin, things like that that we have to be paying attention to when it comes down to hunger and satiation, women are much more sensitive to them. It's nothing bad, nothing wrong with them. It's simply a protective mechanism. It's not the fact that the thyroid's shutting down, it's the fact that the female body is recognizing that there's no food coming in, so they don't wanna be producing eggs. They don't wanna be ovulating. It's natural. Why would a female body want to produce eggs to stimulate potential reproduction if they're not eating, if they're starving? So that's where this whole thing starts, okay? It all has to do with leptin, ghrelin, and insulin but it goes much more than that. So we're gonna talk about what's happening with the brain and with the gonads now. So let's talk about GnRH. GnRH is a particular thing that is secreted by the hypothalamus in both males and females. And it has to do with what's called the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. I know lots of guys that are proud of the HPTA thinking that it only has to do with testosterone and their male bodies. Well, no, that's not the case. The HPTA axis, that entire process, is men and women. And here's how it works. Your brain has an area called the hypothalamus. This hypothalamus ends up secreting something known as GnRH. This GnRH tells the pituitary gland to produce luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. What these hormones end up doing is triggering the production of sperm and testosterone in men and producing ovulation and triggering progesterone and estrogen in women. They both do the same thing, just with a different end result. We still have the same catalyst, the same hormones. Now what ends up happening is how women go through this process compared to men. So now that we know GnRH and we understand the HPTA has to do with men and women, we can talk about the precursor to the GnRH, which is where the problem really starts. And that's something known as kisspeptin. Okay, so where the problem occurs with kisspeptin is just with people not knowing what's really going on. Most of the beef in the fasting community and most of the beef with women in fasting in general all has to do with kisspeptin. You see, the thing is, women produce more kisspeptin. Okay, men and women both produce it. But this kisspeptin is a precursor to GnRH. And when we have a precursor to GnRH, that's gonna directly affect how we produce testosterone and how we produce estrogen. Well, the thing is, is kisspeptin is very sensitive to the hunger hormones. So the leptin, the ghrelin, the insulin. Now, remember how I said that women are much more sensitive to the hunger hormones than men? Well, there we have our answer. Because kisspeptin works directly with the hunger hormones, when women respond more dramatically to those hunger hormones, they have a greater reduction in kisspeptin which means that they have less GnRH being produced, which means that they have less ovulation, they have less progesterone, and sometimes even a skewed amount of estrogen where it goes so high that it shuts off the response from the brain in the first place. So it's truly an issue with kispectin, more so than the thyroid or anything else. And to make some sense of this, I'm going to reference a study that's pretty darn alarming that really makes it very, very clear. In a study that was published in the journal, The Public Library of Science, Researchers took a look at two different groups of rats. They took 10 males and 10 females. Now, one group of rats, they had to eat whenever they wanted to. Another group of rats, they had to eat every second day. So essentially, they were fasting. Now, full disclaimer, a full day of fasting for a rat is closer to like a week of fasting for an adult. So this study is really looking at a longer term fast, but it's still a very relevant study. At the end of 12 weeks, they took a look at the results of both groups. And what they found was that the female rats did end up losing 19% of their body weight, but they also ended up shrinking their ovary size dramatically as well. So yeah, they lost some weight, but they also inhibited their ability to have kids. So that's one part of the problem. But they also found was that kispeptin levels diminished quite dramatically. Now here's the funny thing. Kispeptin levels diminished in both men and women. 
But the difference was that since women had more kispeptin to begin with, it was a more dramatic change when they did lose it. Now, that wasn't all that happened. Remember how I talked before about luteinizing hormone, how important it was? Well, they found that female rats' luteinizing hormone levels absolutely plummeted, like went down close to zero, and their estrogen levels went through the roof. You see, their estrogen levels went through the roof because there was no more communication with the brain and the gonads. So the estrogen levels just went out of control and had nothing to modulate and control it, thereby shutting off the signal even more. Now, what they also found was that the female rats had six times less leptin than the men. Now, leptin is a hunger hormone. Well, it's actually a satiation hormone. But what it basically means is that women were affected by the starvation significantly more than men. Their bodies overreacted. They produced less leptin and thereby caused the hunger signals to go through the roof, which diminished the kispeptin, which therefore made it so that they were producing less luteinizing hormone and shutting down some of their hormones. Okay, now let's talk about the thyroid, because this is the big one. Okay, I've even been guilty of this myself. I've talked about how fasting can slow down the thyroid. Well, I want to back up and I want to make sure that I explain this in a way that makes a lot more sense. When you are fasting, during your actual fasting period, your thyroid activity is lower. But your thyroid activity is going to be lower in between meals too. So when females fast, yes, there is a decline in T3, which is the active form of thyroid at that very point in time but there is no change in T4, and T4 is what's actually going to produce thyroid in the future, and there is no change in TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone. Usually, what you would see is an increase in thyroid stimulating hormone, indicating that the body is struggling and triggering the release of TSH to try to encourage the thyroid to produce more. Even with longer stents of fasting, there hasn't been much evidence to show that TSH levels elevate or T4 levels get lower. The only thing that is proven is that T3 levels do decrease during a fast, which makes sense. Now, one way that you can start paying attention to your thyroid and seeing if you're having an effect in a negative way is if you start noticing that chronically you're getting cold all the time. Chronically, you're feeling cold, not just while you're fasting. You're feeling cold all of the time, especially if you've been fasting. That's gonna be a good indicator that your thyroid is slowing down. But even still, you wanna get some blood work. You wanna see where your TSH is at, you wanna see where your T4 levels are at. At the end of all of this, the issue is not the thyroid. The issue is the leptin and the ghrelin response. So what should women do? Well, the trick is to not let your hormone signals from hunger end up getting out of control. If you find yourself getting outrageously hungry, you probably wanna just break your fast and try again another day because the body is going to change its reaction times. Sometimes a day is going to be perfect for fasting. Some days it's not. And you have to do almost a variation of what's called crescendo fasting. Crescendo fasting was created by Dr. Axe, and quite frankly, I don't think there's a whole lot to it. I think it's just kind of a marketing made up word. But basically what it is, is fasting just a couple days per week, which is what I generally recommend to begin with. So women, you don't wanna be fasting every single day. You wanna be fasting three, maybe four times per week at the most and you wanna be making sure that you're monitoring your TSH levels and monitoring your T4 levels. But at the end of all of it, all that's happening is you're slowing down a process between the brain and the gonads that's throwing your estrogen levels out of whack. So if you find yourself with your hormones out of whack, where you're feeling moody, where you're feeling all over the place and you're feeling cold, it's time to take a little break from fasting and intermittently reinstate it whenever you feel ready to. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I hope that this clears up some of the confusion surrounding women and fasting and what's truly happening in your body.